So in this video, we're gonna look at selecting allowance items or PC PS items and what that does. We'll have a look at redistribution and how that moves markup around. We'll have a look at specifications and how to select them and why that's useful. Lastly, we'll have a look at picking your timeline items and putting them onto your schedule. So I'm in a category I've already worked on, uh, the brick category. And first of all, we're gonna look at this P button for selecting allowances. So the P is for provisional or prime. And if you click it once, it'll go prime cost PC. Click it again, it'll go PS for provisional sum. You will notice that this C button comes on when I click it. And we're gonna talk about what that does in just a moment. But for now, uh, PC is basically selecting an allowance where it's generally gonna be an item and you're telling the customer, hey, there's a, there's a cost that yet to be determined for an item or an appliance. What doing this does is grabs the cost, uh, the raw cost specifically, and puts it onto your quote in a table so that you are able to tell the customer what that allowance amount is. Uh, so when they go and select, their own item or change their mind or, or choose something else, um, they know how much money they've committed to as part of the contract. PS items work essentially the same way, but it'll be a separate table on your quote. PS items are generally including labor or they're a cost to complete something. So a common example is excavation where it's not yet known if you're gonna hit rocks as you start digging. And um, again, that's gonna show that raw cost to the client. Moving on, we're gonna look at redistribution, which is this NEC button. And to do this, we're gonna to go to a bit of a, an illustration of it. So with redistribution, there is essentially three options. N, C or E, as we've touched on already. N make, uh, means none, so no redistribution, i.e. markup will not get moved at all from that item. C is category redistribution, meaning that markup from that item will only move to other items inside that same category. E is estimate redistribution, or commonly known as everywhere redistribution because the markup from those items will move everywhere. So we're gonna look at some, uh, some scenarios. The absolute simplest one is no redistribution where the price of an item plus tax plus markup is what the client gets to see. Uh, it's most commonly what people are used to. And uh, if, if that's the way you've previously been doing your quotes, then the N button is absolutely for you. The C button or category redistribution. What I've done here is say that item three, move the markup from that. And cause it's C, it'll move the markup within the category. So it'll move it to items two and one. In the second category, I've purposely picked a bit of a curly example where it can't move the markup within this category because all of the items in that category are redistributing markup. In that case, what it does is it moves the markup uh, as though it's the E option. So it moves it everywhere within the, uh, the estimate. So when we click the next, uh, the next slide to move forward, it'll show where the markup's gonna land, which is on these two items uh, within the first category. Looking at estimate redistribution, so I've turned it on for items three here, items two and three in the next category. And this is a bit simpler in that the markup basically just goes everywhere uh, where that item does not already have the redistribution button on. So what I mean here is, the markup from this item will move to every other item that doesn't already have E or C showing in this redistribution box. Hence, item one, two, and one are the ones that get the uh, markup redistributed. Moving back to the costing screen, what we're gonna look at now is a common question, which is if you're using redistribution, how do you know uh, where the markup is moving and how much markup is being moved? And in previous videos, we've talked about the sell price box. And in short, this is the answer to that question. So the raw cost of the bricks is 5175. 
If I click on this sell price, it'll say 5175, no markup, because remember it's being moved within the category. Uh, no markup, no redistribution, because it's not getting markup from other items, because it can't, because it's already moving its own markup. So the total without tax is 5175, plus tax gives us 5692. If I look at the next item, which is the labor, this item is getting, well, it's got a raw cost of 3403. It's got its own markup of 816, and I can click show breakdown to figure uh, to basically dig into that some more. Redistribution, it's having markup moved onto it from, well, I'll find out, I'll go show breakdown. In this case, just one other item, but it could be several. And this will show me how much markup's coming onto it from elsewhere. So all that gives us this total. Tax on that is this much. So the grand total or the sell price of this item is $6,008. So the short answer is this will always be the sell price, even if markup is being redistributed because the maths will be done and you'll be able to see within this box how it's been done. A common question we also get is why would I be moving markup? And generally the most common answer is it will relate to PC or PDS items um, where we get clients or our clients. Um, so you guys who will say, hey, I want to show my PC items, my PS items to my client uh, without any markup on it, but I still wanna make money on it. So redistribution is basically a way that you can add markup It'll still be in the contract total, but it'll be moved onto other items so that when you're showing a price to a customer, they are um, seeing the price that you want them to see. Very much personal preference. If, you, if it's something that you want to uh, use yourself, uh, very much important that you know how it works. Final two things just to cover off on, the S button and the T button. S is for specification. And as I'm going through my quoting process, I'll be using this to grab the descriptions of items and pull them into the specification area. The reason I'm doing this is that I wanna be able to have my costings show every cost that I need to include. But on the other hand, I want my client to see stuff that's relevant to them. So the S button is a great way of managing that problem where your estimate costings can have everything like lintels and nogs and studs and everything. Um, but your specifications will be just the items that you uh, click this S button for. Typically, what we'll see is that you might have, let's say 150 items in your costings and 70 of those go into specs because the clients are mainly going to be concerned with color selection, tapware, appliances, stuff they can see. And on many cases, lintels and studs and nogs and things like that are just another language. With this S button, it's just a starting point. So you can push stuff in there. And then if you jump into the specifications video, which we'll uh, be getting to in a moment, you'll be able to see how you can go and add photos, add more context to your specs uh, once you're in there. Lastly, the T button. So T is for time or timeline, whatever helps you remember it. And this is basically saying, create a time item on my schedule when the job gets created. So for right now, it does absolutely nothing, uh, which means that if you are an entry user, clicking it actually does absolutely nothing because you'll never open a job. Common question is what item should I be clicking for this? And very much personal preference, but generally we'll start by saying, hey, labor is a great place to look first. But honestly, you can put whatever you like in. So we might have people who use bricks and labor where they're adding bricks as a reminder to send the purchase order. And if that works for them, that's that's spot on, but it's very much personal preference. Also like the specifications, once they get into the, the schedule itself, you can tinker with them, you can change them, you can add more, you can do whatever you like. Uh, so it is really just getting that ball rolling. Great, so that's how uh, allowances work, how the redistribution works and how specifications and timeline items are managed.